the real battle now is over things like HR1, uh, the House bill, and then down at the, at the state levels. They're, the Republicans are already, uh, they've done it in Georgia, they're in a template of doing it in all these other states, introducing bills uh, that get rid of mail-in voting, that cut ballot boxes, uh, drop boxes down. I mean, a whole slew of very open measures, uh, very clearly designed to make sure that we do not have uh, another, you know, turnout tsunami like we had in both 2018 and 2020. And part of what drove that turnout, a big, a huge part of what drove that turnout tsunami was Donald Trump. Um, and it remains to be seen what kind of part Donald Trump plays and Trumpism in the uh, 2022 and 2024 election. Uh, but the Republicans know that when that many voters turn out, you know, even if they have some rigging capability, uh, they're gonna be hard put and they're, they're going to uh, have to really, really fight like hell, um, the, red, the red thumbs and, and the blue tsunami. And they're trying to make sure that there are no more blue tsunamis and they're really trying to cut down the franchise. That's really where the battle is gonna be. Uh, I don't see great victories coming for electoral transparency. Uh, if we're very fortunate, HR1 passes and it passes uh, in an amended form where truly uh, hand uh, marked paper ballots are made available to all voters, uh, whether they're earlier mail in voters or at poll voters. The way the bill is written now, uh, states are not uh, obligated to provide hand-marked paper ballots for voters who actually come to the poll on election day. And of course the states are trying to, the red states where the GOP has control, they're trying to make sure that basically all voters have to come to the polls on election day. They're cutting uh, back on no excuse mail-in uh, balloting. Um, so in effect, if, if HR1 passes in its current form, it's not gonna do much. You're still gonna get thrown onto BMDs in states like Georgia and Carolina and you know, all these places. Um, so we're working, you know, trying to get that. Uh, scrutineers.org, um, scrutineers.org is doing a lot of work uh, on uh, trying to you know, uh, lobby on HR1. Uh, I'm guessing that uh, you know, there are other groups, national election, uh, Defense Council, yeah, NEDC maybe. Um, I, I'm sure there's some lobbying going on. I'm sure Stacey Abrams is not sitting uh, on her laurels. Uh, and so there will be a lot of pressure. It's going to be a hard political battle. Um, it, it, it does not look like Rove and McConnell uh, went to bat for Trump in this election, which is maybe one reason why Trump was so vehement, uh, because he got the rug pulled out from under his feet. He thought he was guaranteed a victory and he didn't get it. And it's like he was really uh, flaming, you know, mad about it. Um, Rove and McConnell are really interested in the, you know, preserving the rule of the right wing, uh, whether it's in the Republican Party or, you know, however, whatever form it takes. Um, and so, you know, for McConnell, obviously in form of the part of the Republican Party where he has, uh, you know, so much power or had so much power. Um, so, you know, they're going to be really, really fighting and way down at the state level is people don't miss a trick. Uh, and they're already at it to try to really disenfranchise more voters of color, more of the Democratic constituency. And that's really where the battle is going to be. Um, and uh, it's going to be a, a very hard one.